Thank you very much. Oh Jesus, here we are again, looking to thee, knowing that we are insufficient in ourself, and that there is nothing in us save through Jesus Christ, thee, the mighty one of Israel. For thee so loved the world that thee gave to us thine only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we thank thee this morning for the precious blood, Jesus, that you shed on the cross, that we can be brought from darkness into a marvelous light, giving us joy and peace and gladness and songs in the night, as you've lifted us and set us upon the rock that is higher than I. We thank thee, Lord Jesus, that thou art able to save to the uttermost all that have come unto thee, thou wilt in a wise cast out. Though our sins be as scarlet, they can make them white as snow. Even though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. We thank you, Jesus, that thou hast bought us. Thine we are. We do not belong to ourselves. Thou hast shed thy blood and given thy life on the cross to purchase each of us, that we might become in thy likeness. As in 1 John 4, 17 said, as Jesus is so are we in this world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we shall be quickened by the Holy Ghost, that every soul will say, I am uh, by thy mercies and by thy grace willing to leave all. For they said, except ye forsake all and leave all, ye cannot be my disciple. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, 3. We've been stirred through the years that so little has been emphasized concerning this tremendous giant truth. I pray that thou wilt today anoint the hearers, but especially this little servant is so needy. But nothing in my hands I have to bring, but simply to thy cross I cling. We know we're unworthy of such a privilege as this. But who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom of God for such a time as this? Each and every person here has come to the kingdom for such a time as this as to hear and as to become. For as many as received Jesus unto them gave thee the power to become the sons of God. Unless we become after conversion as little children, we shall not enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Why it isn't preached, I don't know. But I know you have said it, and therefore we honor it, and we submit ourselves unto it. Conscious of our inadequacies, our limitations, our nothingness, as we behold thee, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, that has set our feet upon the solid rock, he said, on this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The rock that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, to build thy church that we may become one as thee, God, and Jesus are one as in the 17th chapter of St. John. We thank you in Jesus' name. Would you turn with me to the 17th chapter of St. John? Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. The 17th chapter of St. John, 17th verse. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's all of us and all that aren't here that would be willing to take up the cross to follow. That they all may be one. That means the entire church, all churches, all peoples that claim to be Christian. That they all may be one. That all centers upon their choice of whether they're going to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow. Because if we don't deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow, we'll never be able to enter the kingdom of heaven according to the word of God. He said that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may be believed that thou hast sent me. 
and the glory which thou givest me I have given them that they may be one. Again, he says it, that they may be one. That's the body of Christ. We're one in spirit, one in mind, one in holy harmony, one in consecration, one in entire sanctification, one in spirit-filled people that are willing to do God's will and not their own, to forsake themselves. Since Adam and Eve chose the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, man has decided that he thinks he can plan, he can work things out. We can't work anything out. We in the church, if we dare work something out in ourselves, it's our doing. And he steps aside and watches us as we see that we become nothing. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they all may be one even as we are one. That's tremendous. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. How are we going to become perfect in one? The message is, the text is, in the sixth chapter of Matthew, verse 33. I was preaching on this in 1941 at the Mount Carmel Methodist Church, this same text. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I was preaching this text when all of a sudden, see I was just a young fellow in my 20s, all of a moment that I had never discovered before, I said the world and most of all churches were living in reverse. We're living in reverse. We're doing the planning. We're arranging we're trying to work this out. That isn't what he called us to do. He called us to forsake all, to leave all, to do his will. He said, except you forsake all, you cannot be my disciple. Why isn't this preached throughout the world? That's what he said. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is how we become one. As many as received Jesus unto them, give he the power to become the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And if we live this at home with our children, our companion, and with our neighbors and our friends, he will help us in the time of need. And I need him very much, constantly and continuously. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I look at this word seek, and I'm interested in it. I see in the word seek is hearing. Unless we hear that we have to seek, we're not going to do anything but what we like to do. What we like, what we think is beautiful, what we think is good. That isn't the question at all. That isn't the call. But the first element I see in this word seek is hearing. And then heeding, he said, seek. In the word seek, there is instruction. We're instructed to seek first the kingdom of God. How are we going to seek first the kingdom of God? With our whole heart, with our whole being, leaving all, forsaking all. Unless we forsake all, we're not going to seek the kingdom of God first. We're going to seek our interest, our word, what we want, what we like. And so I see the hearing and the heeding and I see the instruction. And I see in this word, seek something else, searching. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. He's in a search. He's been looking for men and women through the ages that would do God's will instead of their own. It's seldom been in any age. Just occasionally, someone would be willing to do God's will instead of their own and not seek recognition. Seek nothing but God's will with praises and thanksgiving to the precious blood of Jesus that made this possible through the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I see in this word seek, not only the word search, but I see revelation. Unless you receive the revelation that we may 
to seek the kingdom of God first unless we have the revelation. We're not going to seek it first. We're going to seek what seems to be good. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We must not go in that order. We must have the revelation of the urgency of seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, right in there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. When you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, you have his strength, you have your anointing, you have the joy that you want everybody else to have. Hallelujah. You can't work this up. It's got to come from above. Hallelujah. Praise God, I tell you, if you've got the joy in your heart, you respond. You're the son of God. He said, my people are people of great joy. Have you got the joy of God in your soul today? Have you got the joy of Christ within you? If you have, I tell you, you'll have something that you want everybody else to have. Oh, I tell you, God's been seeking people. We're not willing lots of times to do, our, uh, do God's will. We want it to do our own will. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow that he's able to take an old sinner like me, transform me and bring me into light and joy and glory and gladness. Hallelujah. I see in this word seek not only revelation, not only do I see searching or instruction or hearing and heeding, but I see vision. The word seeks full of vision. Without the vision, the people perish. Without the vision, the people perish. And that's what this world is doing. Our prisons are overcrowded because church people haven't been obedient to God. Can you feel it? Can you tell it in your heart? Listen, if the peoples of the churches would obey the Holy Spirit and do God's will, there wouldn't be people in prisons like there are. There wouldn't be this drunkenness and all this adultery and all this fornication if we were obedient to God. Do you know anybody, do you know people that obey God when he talks to them? For as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. If you're not led by the Holy Spirit, get right with God. Get your sins out of the blood. If you've talked about anybody, you have violated Jesus' word when he said, judge not. Any one of you or me, if we talk about anybody, murmur about anybody, criticize anyone, we are living in sin. It's gross sin. Get a little water here. <laughs> Hallelujah for the anointing. Without the anointing, we can't do anything. <laughs> I sit here thinking, here I'm the least one of all that's in this place. And here Jesus would have, have mercy on me to come on my soul. Yeah. Anoint my heart with the Holy Ghost. Because it's just a few feet from this spot. It's where Jesus led me 62 years ago next month. Just a few feet from the spot where I'm at now. That's when he gave me the first leading of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, we want to praise him and give him the glory. And let this place be filled with his presence. Because we're nothing. So, without vision, the people perish. This word is full of seeing. Seeing sight as well as vision. It's full of effort. It's full of applying and energy. This word seek takes a lot of energy. I didn't know I was going to get so excited. I needed it. <laughs> I see in this word seek is the applying of energy. In this word seek is not only that, but it's perseverance. If we don't persevere, we're never going to seek. 
If we fail to deny ourselves, we're not going to seek. So this word seek is filled with love for the word of God. The revelation of God. This word seek is full of prayer. It's full of praise. It's full of self-denial. It's full of dying daily. This word seek requires me dying from morning to night. That's you too. Every person in the church of Jesus Christ and all clergy, if we don't die to ourselves, we'll be doing our will. And God's been crowded out most of the time since the beginning. This is my revelation by God's grace. So by dying to self daily, we'll begin to start to obey him. I see in this word seek is also forsaking all. When Abraham was called to go out to a land which he would afterward receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. He left everything. He forsook all. The man that didn't obey Lot, look at the cost of his descendants. Cost is high. But if you do God's will, the joy of the Lord, it will be your strength. Hallelujah. Isn't this joy of the Lord precious? This peace that passes understanding? Seek ye first the kingdom of God on his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's to every person that will earnestly seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. In, the, in this word, seeking, I see a tremendous thing. From the very first to the last, it's filled with submission. Every person that seeks earnestly the kingdom of God must be submissive to God's will. Jesus said, not everyone that prays, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but it's he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We can pray, we can preach, we can go through beautiful worship services, but unless the Holy Spirit is leading, it's our doing. And I need him every second. My family's heard me say this over and over for years and years. I need him every breath. I need him every step that I be cleansed vessels, sanctified meat for Jesus' use. Not finding fault, not criticizing anyone. The Lord revealed to me at the baptism of the Holy Ghost on April the 14th, 1942. He revealed to me that I could never again criticize anyone to my wife or judge anyone again. Or to complain about anything. Because the Bible said that's not what we're to do. And whenever we complain and we murmur and we find fault, we're living in sin. When we criticize people and we judge people, Jesus said, judge not. Every time a person does that, he has violated the word of God. He has been become disobedient to the word of Jesus Christ. And so we are submissive. Then I want, I want to bring to your attention in the word seek, it's utter dependence. Unless we're utterly dependent upon the Lord as the little children, as upon the parent, we're not going to seek first the kingdom of God. There's a lot in this word seek. I can't find the end of it. Only a little fragment of it perhaps. But the utter dependence that he calls for in us is as little children are utterly dependent upon their, on their parents. And we must become utterly dependent upon him as we are here this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now there's one way that we can miss the word seek. This way is by not waiting upon God. That's a good way to miss the word seek first the kingdom of God. Is only as we wait upon him. Only as we wait upon him will it be revealed to our hearts. 
the sacredness, the seriousness, the greatness, the humility that it requires, the brokenness that it requires. Unless we're very broken, we'll not seek first the kingdom of God. The president of Teddy University was speaking some years ago, and he said, I was a young man of about 18, and I went into my past, my father's study, the pastor's study of the church, and he said, I want to tell you, Father, something that I, I feel like I should share with you. And so the president of Teddy University went on as a young man to say to his father many years before that, I've been called to preach. Well, his father said, that's not news to me. I've known that a long time. But son, before you're able to preach, you'll never be able to until you're broken. Until you're broken. He said, I never knew what that was. For years and years in the ministry, until one day, God took a church to bring me to brokenness. Unless we are broken enough, we'll not seek first the kingdom of God. Unless we are committed completely, entirely to the will of God. Because he said that he would lead his children by the Holy Ghost. And as I meditated about what I should speak about, this is the message. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But I see here in this precious word, seek, that we must have an awareness of the necessity of becoming one. In the word seek, we must have an awareness of the urgency, the necessity, the expediency of becoming one body. That means that we've, com we've confessed our sins We've made our restitutions. If we haven't asked people to forgive us for the things we said about them, we'll not seek first the kingdom of God. If we don't ask our neighbors, our friends, to forgive us of our talking about them, our criticizing them, we're not going to seek first the kingdom of God. That will prevent us from seeking first the kingdom of God. And when we make our restitutions and we've asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins and he's come by the Holy Spirit, the precious blood, the power of the Holy Ghost, his truth. It says we're sanctified through the truth of Jesus. Sanctify them through the truth, thy word is truth. Until our church body is absolutely everyone committed to leaving all, forsaking all, doing God's will, will just be a group of people talking religion and not really following, not really knowing the urgency of seeking first the kingdom of God by prayer, by waiting upon him, by fasting as he leads, by witnessing at every opportunity. And they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. If we don't have a testimony for Jesus, it's because we haven't sought first the kingdom of God. If you have a testimony for Jesus, it'll be your life. It'll be your walk. It'll be your going in and your coming before the throne of grace and before your fellow men. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so we see that Abraham truly sought the kingdom of God first. The demoniac, when he was made whole, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, he wanted to go with Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, you go back home and you tell the people there what the Lord's done for you. And he obeyed and did what Jesus told him. He wanted to be with Christ more than I know. Because he's the first rest he had found. It's the first light he had seen. It's the first time he ever had joy. The first time he ever had rest. The first time he ever had peace. Why shouldn't he want to go with him? He said, no, no. You're going to deny yourself and going back home where you were a troublemaker, you were an upsetter, you were a disturber to the peace, you were a, you were a puzzle to the medical peoples. They didn't know what to do with you. But he had to go back in the storm and witness 
and tell them what Jesus did for them? Have you been telling what Jesus has been doing for you? Have you been declaring that he loves everyone alike? There's no difference whatsoever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Gives you great love. Gives you great peace. Great joy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when you seek first the kingdom of God, he'll set you on fire. He'll send you forth as lights in the world. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye shall have love one for another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, for your anointing, your action, for all these dear ones, everyone, and for all those that have labored to build this building, all those that worked so hard. And here we are, so blessed this morning. We got, we're sitting here thinking, oh, how little we were and how inadequate we are. And, and we didn't know we had to trust you for the anointing and hear you given us this privilege this morning to cry loud and spare not and lift up our voice like a trumpet to tell thy people their transgressions, the house of Jacob, their sins. And Isaiah, as he called to the people of God, we thank thee for everyone that's here this morning. I pray that their souls have been fed, their hearts have been blessed. They came to see this place. I pray that they also were able to see thee, see the light of the world in the hearts of little ones. Oh, we thank you. We praise you. We adore thee. We glorify thee. We honor thee. Hallelujah, hallelujah for the blood. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. We praise thee, dear Father, that thou hast given us great joy and great peace and love for all of our peoples, everyone, everywhere. And we know this is the evidence. When God really comes down and souls really come before thee with all their heart, Holy, holy, depending upon thee as a little child upon its parent. Father, we thank you for love divine, all love excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fix in us thy humble dwelling, round about thy sacred mercy's crown. A charge to keep you and me have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve this present age, our callings to fulfill, oh, may it all our powers engage, Lord Jesus, to do thy sacred will. Let's turn to just as I am, and let's sing together, just as I am, without one plea. All the plea we have is but the blood, the precious blood, the mercies of God. And as we sing this song, when you set in your heart a pounding and a drawing, come and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, of your neglect, of your disobedience, of the times you haven't witnessed when you should, or you've talked too much. Ask God to blot it out so he can start leading you by the Holy Spirit and guide you and direct you. For as many as are led by the Holy Ghost, they are the sons of God. Romans 8 and 14. On this, we want to give God the praise and the glory. Let us all stand, please. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And that's a real precious song to sing. And it's appropriate this morning. Hallelujah. We're thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. For the Holy Spirit. Be obedient as we sing. Without him we can do nothing. But as the Holy Spirit deals in your heart, make your way to the altar. If you can't, just pray in, in the pew where you are. But let him have his way with you. Please be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Let Jesus be first. And as you sing, will you sing the best you can for him as we sing this next stanza, please.
It's so wonderful that it is a 